Second. I would like to call to all of the person that has committed me to order this time. On the committee is myself, Mr. Silver, Mr. Hobbs, other members of the council administration. Item number one is to consider final adoption of an ordinance authorizing the mayor to enter into a professional service agreement with Kathy Sellers Johnson for certain services. Um, this item was heard a couple of weeks ago at a prior council meeting committee and the administration has to be brought up again today. Book item number 39. Okay. Um, again, this professional service agreement is in relationship to the memorandum of understanding with the Department of Economic Development. That memorandum of understanding will allow us to provide small emerging business development services that are offered by the state um, in Alexandria. These services are being offered here. We're going to be able to expand upon that. They are seeking to increase the number of local citizens that participate in their programs. And it is a perfect match for our small emerging business program with AFEET and the services offered in the incubator. Ms. Johnson will serve as an entrepreneurship trainer, which is a requirement to receive the benefits of the Small Emerging Business Program. Each participant in the program is required to complete 30 hours of training in a curriculum that is selected by the Department of Economic Development. Upon completion of that training, you are then eligible for other business services, such as if you are in need of a business plan or if you need assistance with bookkeeping or accounting. So, the entrepreneurship training is the first step in that process. Any questions, Ms. Uh, Smith? And I also state that should be paid out of the grant. Yes. The fees for um, Mrs. Johnson's services will be a part of the money that's awarded by the Department of Economic Development. For each award that we receive from them, we are only allowed to spend 33% on the entrepreneurship training. The rest of it is spent directly on um, business products that the client may be in need of. Mr. Smith, uh, <coughs> the city's exposure is no greater than the grant amount. So whatever the state appropriation is, that would be the only amount that we're bound to pay. In other words, it's free. Yes. No money. No, no money for, from the city. No yes. money from the city. <laughs> Okay, uh, any other questions? If not, can we have a motion uh, with my second uh, that we recommend to the full council? He moves. I move. I move uh, he second. You second. Okay, as I recommend it to the full council. Um, anything else? Other, any other agenda item? If not, I have uh, three resolutions. All right, check. Um, a resolution authorizing the appointment and director and alternative director to serve uh, on the board of directors of the Louisiana Energy and Power Authority, LEPA. These are changes, Mr. Lawson, due to Marcus Canelli. They're just working. Okay. Move second. Recommend full council. Uh, resolution authorizing the appointment of director and alternative director to the to represent the city of Alexandria on the board of directors of the Louisiana Municipal Natural Gas Purchasing and Distribution Authority. Can we get a um, move? Second. Clay Vanderlick on the gas and uh, who's on the uh, on the Oh, Kay director. will be the primary director on LEPA now uh, until we have a new utilities director. Uh, Chuck will remain the alternative director, and Clay Vanderlick will be on the gas. Okay. Second. Okay. Move to second. I recommend to the uh, full council. Okay, one more. A resolution authorizing the appointment of director and alternative director to represent the city of Alexandria on the board of directors of the Louisiana Municipal Natural Gas Purchasing. Just did. And distribution authority. Okay, I'm sorry. Just did that one. We'll do it twice, just make okay. sure it's good. Okay, all right. A resolution also authorizing the mayor to reappoint Russell Potter and Mike Day to the Alexander Municipal Fire and Police Civil Service Board. Uh, motion second. I uh, recommend to the uh, full council. Is there anything that's come for this committee at this time? If not, uh, I just asked, uh, I'm going to ask the mayor, how close are we on um, finding somebody on the utilities? 
on directors. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Charles. I'll do that. Thank you, Charles. Yeah. Yeah. Charles. Charles. <laughs> <laughs> Charles. <laughs> Charles. <laughs> Um, Miss McGill, how close are we? <laughs> we're, we're as close as we were last week. We're going to get it done. We're going to update in a couple weeks. We're going to update in a couple weeks uh, uh, yes. in uh -huh. the administration. If nothing else comes for personnel insurance, uh, at this time, this meeting is adjourned. Okay, the next meeting is the utility uh, committee meeting. I would like to call this meeting to order at this time. The president of the committee is myself, Mr. Hawks, Mr. Silver, other members of the council president, the administration. Item number one is to consider final adoption of an ordinance authorizing the mayor to enter into a consulting agreement with GDS Associates to assist in electric rehabilitation ability, compliance, and other electric projects are issues that require additional professional support. It's book item number 40. At this time, we have an administration. Mr. Johnson, that uh, contract to, uh, that we hope to enter into with GDS is to provide services to electric distribution. We're coming up for our first NERC audit in June. In fact, that's on June 23rd. And um, this group of um, consultants will assist us in evaluating all of the audit information that we have and preparing us for the audit. It's, it's critical that we enter into this um, contract with them. We had an exhibit B for compensation, but it wasn't in there. Is there any kind of figure in, in mind? Is this the number one basis or something? Please, I don't have it in mind. Do you, what is the book on it, Mr. Silver? Oh, oh, four, four, four zero. While we're looking, uh, this NARC compliance issue, of course, is, is tough. Uh, it's been tough for all cities. It's, it's been tough for us. This group, GDS, I believe, is doing uh, this for Lafayette. And as we all know, Lafayette's model pretty good on utilities. So we had some trust uh, there. And uh, they've, done, they've been involved with numerous compliance audits. Some of the NARC requirements we're talking about, well, they're, all, they're brand new for the city. And uh, Mike Marcott has met with this group. and. Is, make, is making the recommendation. We have a lot of issues that have come up with NERC compliance, and I'm going to look for the payment schedule. Huh? Is it, it's, it's on a payment schedule? Can y'all, well, yeah, and it's, it's incorporated if it's, but it's not attached. Uh, could we ask that you uh, refer it out favorably and, and full counsel, if we don't have the exhibit, you can defer it another two weeks? Fair enough, I have move. Okay, move a second. That it be deferred based on the exhibit and uh, presented to full counsel. Is there anything else to come before? Um, can we get a motion a second? Do we have that? You did. Yeah. Move a second. Uh, thank you, Mr. Silver. Uh, recommended full council. Uh, uh, Mayor? Yes, I think there's another item. Nancy has that. Uh, Nancy, did you get the phase one? Yes. Okay. okay. For Providence. Uh, we have one last item that uh, Mr. Smith and the administration have been working on. It's with uh, Providence uh, Company. Uh, this is for a phase one for the Ruston Foundry site. The managing engineer is Charlie Van Hoof, who's a, a local person who works with Providence, uh, which I believe has an office out of Baton Rouge. Also, LeCount, Gulfport, Mississippi, and Irving, Texas. Uh, I sent down a couple of days ago this letter just to give you an idea of what we were talking about. We can certify under our consultancy that this is a definite need that's value added to the city. Uh, civil service cannot uh, do what we currently need done, which is a phase one out there. Um, and it meets all the other consultant uh, items for accountability that we have uh, with regard to our new policy. I have to be candid with you and say, though, that 
normally this would probably be an RFP process to do a phase one. Uh, and you need to realize that there is some degree of urgency, at least as expressed by Mr. Gist, uh, by Mr. Smith and Ms. McGill's to me that Providence was, were the only folks that came to us early on in this process. So we happen to have a group that we felt could handle doing a phase one. A phase one, Mr. Marshall, is the walkthrough, the basic level uh, look at it, identifying where items are in that 29 acres adjacent to the foundry. So we feel like we have a problem because the person who was with the Shaw group just recently left. They're going to finish six months early just about six months early with the foundry statement, uh, uh, and we think that we need to move. I'm going to ask Mr. Gist to address it since he's here. So we felt like it was prudent to go forward with a phase one, and then you guys can uh, can do an RFP on a phase two, which is the much more extensive item, if that's your choice. Then I will defer to Mr. Gist and the council's judgment on whether you think this is emergent enough to move forward without an RFP or, or whatever you want to do. Uh, Mr. Marshall, we spoke about this earlier. It's um, th the phase one is something that has to be done pretty quickly. Uh, I was notified Friday evening that the railroad had gotten to a point where on the actual six acre site, that's the Rustin Foundry site, uh, they had finished doing a lot of their dirt moving work. Uh, that, w that work was, was in part impacting their 30 acre adja nearly adjacent site and we've been waiting for that work to complete before we went forward with the phase one as you know the railroad is considering donating that 30 acre site not the rust and foundry site uh, what we would like to do is go forward if we could have the matter introduced it could be passed on the third uh, I will give better explanations on the third. We anticipate receiving a contract from the, the engineering firm in, uh, in Baton Rouge. They actually have an Alexandria office. Uh, but we would be able to describe that in greater detail. The cost is estimated at around $6,000 for a phase one. We've already been told that we probably will have to do a phase two. You have already budgeted the money. The money's in the line item for the, uh, in the, for the, for the Ruston Foundry and related property sites and planning. Uh, we would like to have the ordinance introduced so that we could at least consider this uh, coming could, up in the next council meeting. Could it be construed sort of like a semi-emergency to get this thing expedited? <laughs> yeah, well, the railroad thought we could come on last Sunday, uh, and that that's pretty much a, uh, we need to get going. We can't l release the contractor until we have a contract in place, uh, which will be in approximately two weeks when the when the council meets back. Yeah, I would uh, recommend it. Well, it circumstances that we waive this and, and move that you proceed accordingly. I don't want to diminish six thousand dollars as something unworthy of an RFP, right. but Mr. Marshall's low I mean it considering keeping this on track and how important it is to the folks over there for six thousand dollars to have someone ready, you, you still have that process available for a phase two, which is extensive. Uh, I don't I can't see any objection. I, I, I wouldn't want this to be a deal breaker. No, sir. And the planning department, if you recall, we talked about this at the retreat last week. The planning department is also considering, I don't see Mr. Branch, uh, we're going to probably be recommending uh, a significant survey of the 30 acres, including a topographical survey of the 30 acre track. Um, that, what, that's not part of this contract, but I did want to remind you that's part, of, part and parcel of some of the things that the administration feels uh, they need to recommend to the council to complete a due diligence study of the 30 acre site. And I've sent the letter down to you so you can see about the company, their qualifications, and what kind of things they can do. And that letter is March 19 dated. So I'd like to, uh, at this time, uh, do this against recommendation. I would uh, read the ordinance day and bring it back in committee at the next meeting. Uh, it, it's just it's really for introduction at, uh, at, uh, through the committee process mr. Johnson and then we, if we could go ahead and get the ordinance introduced this evening miss Thiel's plans on publishing it on Friday it'll lay over for two weeks we'll have a more of a general discussion and I've spoken to the engineers last night they're going to get us their contract uh, in due course and that's coming to miss McGill's well, just just for the purposes okay, of. I'll go ahead and just introduce the ordinance. 
uh, which states uh, authorizes America to enter into a contract with uh, Providence Engineering and Environmental Group LLC to provide certain professional environmental and engineering, engineering services, including but not limited to a phase one environmental study and other studies and work related to the city's potential acquisition of a 28 plus acre site, more or less of land owned by Kansas City Southern Railroad or a subsidiary including other properties of the city adjacent to related thereto, which may be the subject of a donation or transfer to the city of Alexandria and otherwise to provide with retrospect thereto. Thank you. Second. Yeah. So moved. Hey. Recommend the full council. Okay, I have one more, which is an ordinance, which is acceptance of the subdivision platform Enterprise Place Subdivision. Where did all this stuff come from? Is that something new? You just got that? You just got I'm this. sorry, Mr. Johnson. Mr. Silver distracted me. Yeah, I, uh, the, the ordinance that's uh, been presented. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, with this ordinance, uh, which is acceptance of the subdivision plan for Enterprise Place Subdivision. It, that's a Mr. Marshall subdivision. You know, what, what it is is that it was ready to be brought down, and it was ready to be brought down to us, but we weren't at home to accept it. So that's why I'm allowing this to come. Okay. I thought the administration was screwed up. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not. Can we get you something, Mr. Silver? Well, look at me. I'll accept it. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, uh, I shall move uh, and second and recommend it to full council. <laughs> Is there anything else to come before this committee at this time? Uh, yes, Mr. Mr. Johnson. Uh, Mr. Silver had previously asked about the budget for GDS. I sent that down downstairs. I don't know why I didn't make it into the book, but I provided Mr. Silver with a copy of the uh, scope of work. The budget is uh, $31,000 for our NERC compliance. And I've also provided the members of the council with the fee schedule as per individual engineer. Thank you, Mr. Johnson. And, and let me just say that um, any NERC penalty could far exceed uh, $30,000, so it will be money well spent. Any other questions? Anything else coming for this committee at this time? Yeah, I wish would be personally liable for anything. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, we did move on. OK, if nothing else, at this time, this meeting is adjourned. <laughs> Okay, we'll see all your